Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. I'm on a recording spree today. Apologies if my voice is slightly gone. I'm, uh, we've got a bank holiday weekend and I'm trying to stock up some videos for the weekend and there's been tons of news and all the rest. Anyway, what I have for you here today is a one key brutal Hydra team with the most recent fusion or fragment legendary, Beveled of the Thorn. He is here in the lead and he is doing an absolutely fantastic uh, job. And guys, guess what? This Bivald of the Thorn is unbooked. Have I done that for any special reason? No, I, I well, I just don't have any books, really. Uh, and he's gonna be so much better when he's booked, but even unbooked, this absolutely works and he's well worth using. He is super, super good. So let's look at this team. Let's break down what's going on. Let's actually talk about the damage trifecta first. Um, it's it's this exact same trifecta that I used in my nightmare video. I really like this trio of champions. So we've got Royal Guard, um, who's doing those enemy max HP nukes, also bringing some supplemental decreased speed, which is very, very useful. Uh, we've got Geomancer on the far right. He is going to be placing these burns, reflecting damage, reducing the damage we take, also bringing decreased accuracy. Uh, which I haven't talked about too much in the Hydra videos. I think I've sort of been neglecting discussing that a little bit, but it's very helpful. It's very helpful, right? Being able to stop these heal reductions going on from the Head of Decay, now that we're provoking him all the time and he's A1-ing all the time, uh, being able to remove a lot of the poisons from Head of Blight, uh, the provokes from Head of Wrath, all that sort of stuff. You know, just having good resistance and being able, uh, yeah, just being able to... To, to apply decreased accuracy and, and avoid a lot of those debuffs is so helpful and it's much more effective, much more effective uh, than, um, yeah, it's much more effective than having to bring in block debuffs, which can get stolen. As you can see, we are having a little bit of trouble here in this team. So my initial thought with this team was using Lydia. Unfortunately, as we, we probably saw if you watched my Nightmare Hydra one key, uh, I had to use Lydia in my Nightmare team. She, it turns out for me at the moment, she is essential for that team. So I couldn't use Lydia here. And the issue, slight issue that we ran into is that Bivold gives himself a strength and buff and nobody else can apply strengthen in this team. And that extra buff makes Bivold the target of Head of Mischief, actually a decent amount. Now, it doesn't happen too crazy often, seeing as Bivold is getting so much turn meter, he's outrunning the other buffs. Um, but it happens enough to be a little bit of an issue. Luckily, we do have the blocked buffs, uh, yeah, block buffs debuff from Ugo to stop Head of Mischief actually successfully stealing stuff. Uh, but it does happen a little bit. So that's definitely a bit of a downside. That strength and buff is a bit annoying. Unfortunately, it is. So there you go. Uh, our Mischief Tank in this comp is actually Inquisitor Shemail. I showed you a Mischief uh, Tank Shemail build in my Inquisitor Shemail guide. I went over all the different sort of builds I use for him. So you can see that in more detail there. Um, but yeah, so because Shamel as a mischief tank, because he doesn't give himself any buffs, we do have a blood shield ring, hence the tiny shield he has, which helps, but it's not, it's not guaranteed. It's not essential. And again, Bivold also does give you a shield, which can sort of overwrite that a little bit. So it's just something to watch out for, right? It's not a, it's not an absolutely, uh, a, a massive problem. It doesn't ruin the run, but it is something of a weakness that you need to know about. Um, who else do we have in there? We've obviously got Ugo, decreased defense, AoE, block buffs, AoE. I've talked about why that block buffs is important. Uh, we're not boosting Geomancer with Shemail in this team. We're boosting Bivold, so we're not going to get that many HP burns out, which means that um, actually having that block buffs is very useful. It's actually very useful. You can see right here, another little techie thing I did right there. I did not provoke Head of Decay because I wanted to get the shield on Torment to try just get some of that extra turn meter out of Torment. So that was a little bit of a sneaky trick. Uh, but anyway, um, what was I saying? I can't remember what I was saying. Something extremely important and insightful, no doubt about it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let's talk about Shamrock. So Shamrock, he is the final member of this team, and I really like him in this team. What is he giving us? He's giving us increased speed, increased defense, and AoE decreased speed. Uh, he also gives us like some healing and revive on death when we go down low. He can also steal buffs with his A1 so he can remove that increased attack if Head of Wrath does get it on. Uh, so he's just giving us a whole lot of, of, of useful things in this team comp. I, I really like him. He's really, really nice. Uh, and again, he's sort of supplementing for that Lydia. My initial plan was to bring in, instead of Ugo and Shamrock, it was Lydia and Ursula the Mourner. 
Um, uh, let me actually try to find it on my Discord. Someone posted it on my Discord. Uh, they actually posted the team that they used. Let me try to get you the picture so you can see their team that they ran, which was the, really the inspiration for this. They tried it out first. So let me actually give them a proper shout out. I kind of forgot until I sat <laughs> to record and was talking about this and what else I would have run. Uh, but yeah, so it was Lux Astalder. Lux Astalder. Let me actually grab this for you. If you want to see this full run, by the way, without me blabbing, uh, it will be up there. This is actually probably a tiny picture. Yeah, it's tiny. But you can see, he says, brutal first try. Okay, actually, this is a terrible picture. Let me open the original. Bivol did work. But there you go. Lux Astralder. He's trying it out. Here we go. We can see it. He did 34.06 million here on brutal. Bivol smashing it. Geomancer, all the rest. Looks really good. He had Lydia in there. He had Ursula. Ursula gives you AoE decrease attack, which is useful. Also, increase attack to up some of the damage here. Um, and, and Lydia obviously giving you the decreased defense and weaken is going to up your damage. You can see I did 30 million with this team, which is a one key for Brutal. Uh, not as good as his, but still pretty good considering we don't have the, the luxury of a Lydia right here. This is still pretty good. So the team, we're sort of slamming through. Again, one of the keys for this to work through the reset point, you do need Head of Torment to respawn within the first few head kills. Uh, again, roughly about the halfway point. You want your first Head of Torment to carry you through about half the damage you need and the second Head of Torment to carry you through that other half using Inquisitor Shamel and boosting. It's very important. Bivold, certainly an unbooked Bivold like I have. Again, reminder, unbooked Bivold, there's no way he's going to be able to lock down Head of Decay without getting those Torment boosts. It's just not going to happen. He can certainly delay, but he's not going to do it consistently. His A1 especially is so much more consistent when he's booked. Booked A1, 50% chance provoke unbooked a1 is only a 30 percent chance it's, it's actually kind of miserable so yeah definitely something to watch out for but you can see how this team is working basically it's pretty nice we can skip on here ahead a little bit we can see us coming up against like the head of, of wrath and all the rest we certainly get slammed around a lot one thing we don't have a ton of on this team is obviously healing in this team ugo does a good chunk of healing and that's good bivold also heals quite a bit with his a3 but it is on a long cooldown unbooked it's a five turn cooldown so you can see it certainly gets sketchy right there it was a pretty scary moment where we've got debuffs on head of blight makes this also very scary when head of blight debuffs you and then the head of torment comes in with its a2 ability which smacks you harder the more debuffs you have that is a scary moment uh, that's where you kind of there's a bit of randomness in terms of did you land decrease accuracy and prevent some of those debuffs if you did you might be okay if you didn't you're going to be in some trouble um Another scary moment is obviously the Head of Wrath. Because we don't have decrease attack, Head of Wrath does hit us hard, but we are able to survive. And I'll show you the gear that I'm using on these champions so you get an idea. You can see I'm trying to provoke him. <laughs> I've been trying to provoke him with Bivol's a, a, uh, A1, and it's just, it's just not working because he's not booked, but it's okay. And we're blasting on through here. You can see at this point, it's what, 29 point something million? And we're actually up to 30 million. And this is where stuff started to fall apart. I think what happened was... Actually, look at this. Yeah, Geomancer got eaten really early in this run. Look at this for me. Geomancer got eaten. Yeah, he got eaten by Head of Decay. And uh, I think we'd, we'd use, just use Takedown from Royal Guard. I wasn't paying attention. Or no, Takedown's just about coming up. But I, I don't know exactly what happened. Oh, yeah, we were just off this. Yeah, so it's kind of awkward. And I guess I panicked a little bit. But we did have that buff steal come through from Mischief. And yeah, it just sort of didn't quite work out, unfortunately. So that's a bummer. So I think, yeah, Ge Geomancer got eaten relatively early. Unfortunate. If we'd been able to break him free, it might have gone differently. But there you go. So how do we do in the end? Let's take a look at it here. We did 30.9 million damage in the end, which is great. For Brutal, we're looking for 29.4, oh, actually. So we did it by a little bit extra. And you can see these were the stats from the team. So in terms of damage, we've got quite an even spread. We 10 million from Geomancer and Royal Guard each. Geomancer would have been higher, except he died really early on. Uh, Bivolt and Inquisitor actually doing 4 million each. So actually both contributing a relatively reasonable chunk. Um, in terms of healing, see, Royal Guard actually healed himself a lot. That's with the leech. So everyone's actually doing quite a bit of healing. That's with the leech because Bivolt does AoE leech and Ugo does some supplemental leeches as well for that unbooked Bivolt who's not 100% guaranteed to leech. Um, Bivolt then himself doing lots of healing with his A1, his A3. He does shielding as well, which is cool. Ugo doing quite a chunk of direct healing too with her A3. Uh, so it all comes together, I think, in a pretty nice way, a pretty nifty way. We have one Guardian set here on Shamrock. He could run a second Guardian set on Ugo. He could run a second Guardian set, perhaps on Inquisitor Shamel. Though I think to get the requisite 
I, I talked about it in the guide on him. To get the requisite resistance and stats with him in a Guardian set would be quite hard. But it's something you could maybe consider. Reflex on uh, Geomancer and Relentless on Royal Guard. But it's not the best Relentless set by any means. So if I show you the gear for these particular champions and the masteries, how I have them built out. Uh, so for this team we have, let's go to Bivol first of all. Who's an absolute star. Wow, Bivol of the Thorn. What a beast. What a great champion. I have him in triple perception. He actually has maybe a bit too much accuracy. I do have him with an accuracy banner. That's not fully rolled up. So he is actually over indexed here on accuracy. In terms of his stats, I have him at 60k HP, two and a half thousand defense, 221 speed. I do have him with 100% crit rate and 220% crit damage. 400 accuracy so he doesn't really have any resistance he actually comes with a base 50 resistance so you could potentially build him as your mischief tank i think that could work however in this team comp because he is in that lead position and boosted so much by shamel he'd outrun his buffs and it wouldn't work in this comp but perhaps in other comps you could build him as a mischief tank uh but yeah this this build is not aiming to do that uh, and essentially we do have him in crit damage gauntlets uh, HP chest, speed boots. Uh, I think he probably should have crit damage necklace. Yeah, he's got a crit damage necklace, but actually triple roll accuracy. I could probably switch that to somebody else and he could have one that's worse and that would fix the accuracy issue of having too much. Um, but yeah, that is what he does. As you can see, he is unbooked, so he becomes much better when he's booked. We'd have 20% more damage on his A3 and one cooldown off, and that's his AoE heal and shield. That would be quite nice to survive. His A2, again, would be a guaranteed provoke. Right now, he's not 100% or to leech. So that would be helpful. And having the cooldown reduction on it would be a big deal. And then his A1 also would do a bit more damage and be that much better chance to provoke, uh, which would be nice. So those things would make a pretty big difference. He, by the way, is a 28% HP in all battles aura, which is great. And for his masteries, I have him set up like this, going down defense with those counterattacks and getting War Master. And that's how I have him set up. And I was really happy with his performance, actually. I thought he worked really, really well. Shamrock. He's coming in in a Guardian set right here, giving us some of that protection. He is running pretty fast. You could actually get him faster. Uh, he's a little bit slow for what I would like, but he's pretty fast. He's got a decent chunk of resistance. Certainly when that decreased accuracy goes out, he is going to be doing some good resistance. His accuracy is okay, but again, it could be a bit higher here for Brutal. Um, would like a little bit more. You could see he did get resisted a few times by the Head of Suffering. Though the other heads, he does debuff most of the time. And he's tanky enough. He's doing a fine job. He is booked. And for his masteries, I have him down into the accuracy uh, section here. Extended buffs, extended debuffs, more accuracy. Um, and yeah, that's how he's set up. So a bit of a funky build, <laughs> to be fair. A bit of a funky build. But I kind of like how it works on him. So that's how I have him set up. Uh, I actually just realized he has a Blood Shield Ring that's not rolled up. I... I I forgot. I forgot about that. That's that slipped on by. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if we look at the damage trifecta then. So the damage trifecta we have. I talked about him in a particular guide. We have our mischief tank Shamail. He has a blood shield ring. He's slow. Tons of resistance. And he is there to tank the Hydra. Uh, the mischief head I mean. He's got war master and deterrence. All the rest. Uh, we have... Um, yeah, it's this one. We have reflex geomancer. These are the masteries. And uh, yeah, he's in this build with Reflex. So he's got decent speed at 222. Decently tanky. Uh, good accuracy. He actually has pretty good resistance as well. So when he does place that decrease accuracy, he is going to start resisting a lot of stuff. So actually, it's kind of an all-around build. And I actually quite like this one. I've actually been really happy with him. Um, he's pretty cool. So yeah, I like that one. I've got a uh, Ugo that I've just switched into Relentless. I was trying her in Taunting last week, and it was okay, but I switched her into Relentless because I've actually got a very fast Relentless set here for a supportive champion. So she's nice and fast. Again, going to glyph her up and up that speed. Very tanky, almost 70k life, about 2,500 defense, and 400 accuracy. So, uh, yeah, she really has a bit too much accuracy, but we don't mind too much. We can maybe optimize her gear a little bit, but just lots of health, lots of speed, enough accuracy, and that's really all that she needs. Uh, Relentless set is great. Guardian set is great. Taunting set is great. Um, just whatever sets to give her stats are fine as well. Whatever you have works well on her. For her masteries, War Master and extending those debuffs. And, uh, yeah, then the last one in here is my Relentless Royal Guard. These are his masteries. Now, he's quite slow. 
unfortunately. So he's only 204 speed. So he's, he's kind of slow as nails, unfortunately. He's super slow. As slow as nails, is that even a term? I don't even know. Slow as snails, maybe, makes more sense. I don't know. Anyway, he's, he's actually very tanky. Almost 50k health, 2.2k defense. So he's actually a very tanky royal card. 100% 100 crit rate, 240 crit damage. So he hits hard. And when, when Relentless pops off, it is good. However... He doesn't have any refresh accessories, so that's a downside. And he's very slow. Like, I'm trying to get my Royal Guards more up to something like 230 speed. So he's 30 speed off. That's a pretty big deal. He, he feels very slow for, like, Brutal and for Nightmare Hydra. Not so much on Brutal, but certainly if you put him into Nightmare Hydra, he's very slow. So I'm going to be trying to up his speed a little bit. My Husk and my Royal Guard are both up at 230. My other Royal Guard at 230. This guy's lagging behind, but he does have Relentless. He obviously hits really hard. He's tanky, so he does a decent job. Um, but yeah, that is how he's built up. So there you go. That is the team. Um, yeah, let me know what you think of it, guys. I, I can't believe it. I almost skipped Bivolt. I almost skipped Bivolt, guys. I did because I was on holiday during in the middle of it, and I didn't know if I'd bother putting in the work. But I'm so glad that I did. Unbooked Bivolt. Is he good against Hydra? Yes, he is. He's absolutely fantastic. Is he worth bucking up? I think yes, absolutely 100%. He is fantastic. Locking down Head of Decay, putting out good damage, putting out a surprising amount of healing to your team as well, and just giving you so much more control of Hydra. Him in there with Shamail. Like I said, this is Bivold plus four epics and then a Shamrock. And you could put in like a Lady Kimmy instead. You could put in any other sort of speed booster, um, decrease speeder. They could work indeed as well. So... I mean, like, you could put in, like, you could put an Apothecary and throw this team into hard, and I think you could one-key hard, no problem. Even with Apothecary, maybe you do okay. Maybe here on Brutal. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> maybe. Uh, but there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you've used any other teams with Biffled. I'd like to hear, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.